states. And then there would be major cities, each of the major cities, Basra, Mosul, and Baghdad, each would be a state. And then there would be a state for the Kurds. There would be a Sunni state. And then the entire dissolution of the Arabian Peninsula would take place. The dissolution of Syria would take place. This is the Yanon plan, and I invite you to take a look at it online. And then there was another plan that was put forward. This plan was put forward by for Israel, a strategy for the 1990s. And what was that plan called? It's called a clean break. And those people who theorized and actually implemented U.S. policy, known as the Project for a New American Century, were the ones who were also involved in this strategy for Israel for the 1990s. And basically, what did they theorize? They theorized that there must come a time when Israel can not only deal with, contain its regional enemies, but it must transcend them. One other thing that's very clear in the reading of the clean break is that the clean break is in, so entitled because these people wanted to make sure that Israel was able to do what it felt it needed to do in its own interest without the constraints of public opinion in the United States. And so that clean break meant that, the United, that Israel could also break cleanly from the dependency, its dependency on the United States. There's another item that I'd like to mention to you, and it's called cryodynamics. This is a new field of research. And those of you who know now that I've been spending my days researching targeted assassination, the counterintelligence program, as a part of my PhD work at Antioch University. But this cryodynamics is a new field. And this is the science of social strife. And cryodynamics is the science of how you break down countries. That's what we're seeing, the dissolution of countries, exactly according to what Yanon wrote, exactly according to what a clean break, Richard Pearl and those guys, what they wrote in a clean break the dissolution of countries. So that when we look at Iraq, we see sociocide. When we look at Libya, we see sociocide, which is a term that's used by Johann Galtung to describe the complete destruction of the societies of a society, the institutions of society. And that's what we're witnessing. That's what the US military is being used to do. Cryodynamics estimates that once a society has been completely broken down, that it will take anywhere from 12 to 15 years for the people in that country to get themselves in order to, together enough so that they can reconstitute a government. Imagine what a rogue government can do, a rogue country can do, if it's got 12 to 15 years in order to work its will. And then we get to the, to the question at hand. And that is the statement of Wesley Clark in 2007 when he was running for President of the United States. And he we went before the Commonwealth Club in California oh, and he talked right about there. the plan that was in the Pentagon to invade seven countries in five years. Those seven countries are Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Sudan, Somalia, and Libya. Our government, literally as we speak, is still bombing Somalia. Sudan has been dismembered into two countries. Iraq is not functioning yet. Iran is on the list. Syria is not is under extreme attack right now. Lebanon is on the list. And Libya has ceased to exist as a country that functions on behalf of the people. So I would like to expand just a minute on this uh, statement by Wesley.
Wesley Clark. Now, when he said, in laying ground the ground for his comments, is that in 1991 he paid a visit to the Pentagon and visited Paul Wolfowitz. And Paul Wolfowitz said that what the events of the decade of the 90s had demonstrated was that the United States could go all the way up with NATO expansion. The United States could go all the way up to the Russian border without a military response from Russia. So that meant that the United States military would have a free hand to act in the region, West Asia and North Africa. And we've seen that. The pity to me is that it took Wesley Clark so long to talk about publicly what he learned in 1991. That's the pity to me. The um, fifth person, or a uh, person that I want, the fifth topic that I want to mention briefly is General Martin Dixie, who is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, I just happen to have had the recent opportunity to speak with an investigative journalist. And he told me that the reason that Congress became involved in the debate was because on the very day that President Obama was going to unleash the bombs over Syria, General Dempsey paid a one o'clock in the morning visit to the White House and spoke directly with the President and asked him, instead of unleashing bombs in Syria, why don't you unleash public opinion in the United States Congress? That's what happened, at least according to this investigative journalist. And as a result of that, that bought time for us to work through this situation with diplomacy. Well, it really wasn't the United States that was doing the diplomacy, it was Russia. So can you imagine that we just had our previous speaker, Lenny, talking about Russia today being an outpost of truth for people in the United States. Who ever would have thunk it just a few short years ago? Woo! And not only do we have to rely on the Russian press for truth, we also get a little bit of truth from the Iranian press from Press TV. And who ever would have thought it? But that's why they are under fierce attack. At least the Iranian press, Press TV, is under fierce attack. While in the United States, U.S. courts oh, US have granted, through court action, the right of U.S. media to knowingly lie to their public without any, with impunity. That's the state of freedom of the press in the United States. The last thing that I would like to mention is why 911 Truth is so important. Because basically, in my opinion, what we were told by the Bush administration in 2001 and ever since then has been the big lie. It's been an excuse for war after war after war after war. It was an excuse for the Bush administration to launch wars against international law. Tony Blair launched wars against international law. And now our President Barack Obama has launched wars against the peace, against international law. I dream and I yearn for the day when we the people of the United States can have a president of the United States who is not a war criminal. been used to justify death, destruction, war, and killing. And yet we the people of this country and people of the international community don't even have a clue as to really what happened on that day. 
But I can tell you who does have a clue. They've got a whole bunch of clues that they've assembled. And that's the 911 Truth community. And I want to tell you that I love each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.